that we have interpretation. So uh, for Spanish and English, so please uh, do uh, choose the, uh, the language that you have. Um, who is sharing the screen to go to the next slide, please? Alejandro? Yeah. So uh, you can see the interpretation icon down. Uh, so please then uh, choose your preferred language there. Good, I hope that is clear. No. Yeah. So good morning, uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, my name is uh, Fatim Zara Taibi. I'm the global coordinator of the Capacity Building Initiative, uh, the Capacity, uh, the Global Support Program, uh, in short, CBGSP. So the CBGSP is a global project funded by Jeff, implemented by UNEP, and executed by the UNEP Copenhagen Climate Center. Uh, the program aims at supporting countries in their transparency efforts, uh, particularly in the transition to the new ETF provisions and the BTR. Uh, on behalf of the Global Environment Facility, the UNFCCC and its collaboration centers, uh, and the CBGSP, I would like to warmly welcome you to this webinar about the Jeff support for financing the BTR uh, that is aimed uh, at the Latin American and the Caribbean region. Uh, as you know, Article 13 of the Paris Agreement established the enhanced transparency framework with the objective to enhance transparency, track progress towards the achievement of the Paris Agreement, and build mutual trust between parties to raise climate ambition. Uh, this new ETF was further uh, fleshed out in, in the MPGs adopted in Katowice and completed in Glasgow with the adoption of the various reporting tables, tabular formats, and the various outlines of the transparency reports. This new system, although building on the existing MRV arrangements under the convention, has significant new provisions for developing countries and present challenges, particularly with regard to the technical requirements and the frequency of reporting. In addition to uh, technical capacity, uh, producing in the BTR requires significant financial resources. Jeff is currently the primary fund providing support to countries uh, for the preparation of their transparency reports. And with the increased need uh, for support, Jeff has allocated important resources to the transition to the BTR and has developed various modalities to fit the need of developing countries. Uh, as per uh, the, the CMA1 decision, uh, countries must submit their first BTR latest by 31st December 2024 with flexibility provided to LDCs and SIDS who may submit at their discretion. By end of uh, March this year, Jeff has provided support to 65 countries, to 65 parties. Nonetheless, there is still an important number of countries that are eligible for support and that have not yet requested Jeff support. With uh, the deadline that I mentioned fast approaching, approaching uh, it is critical that all developing countries initiate the process to access Jeff funding at the earliest. Uh, that is why uh, we have, with the Jeff and the UNFCCC, uh, uh, decided to organize this information webinar to explain the support provided by Jeff, the various mo modalities available, and how you can access this support through the various Jeff implementing agencies. We hope that by the end of this webinar, uh, you will have a good idea and a good understanding of what uh, support to expect, how to request it, uh, to whom and how the whole process will work. We look forward to an informative webinar with plenty of interactions with you. And thank you very much for uh, taking the time to join us uh, today. I would like now to wel welcome uh, Filippo Berardi uh, from Jeff, who will be providing a few welcoming remarks on behalf of the organizers. Uh, Filippo, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you have the floor. And uh, thank you, Fatima Zaha. And good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, colleagues, wherever you're joining from. Thanks for uh, for uh, for joining this 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 workshop. Um, let me start by uh, perhaps taking a little bit of a sort of uh, history dive. Um, it's been uh, more than four years. Uh, since the adoption of uh, December, in December 2018 of the modalities, procedures and guidelines uh, for the enhanced transparency framework under the Paris Agreement. 
uh, and the framework, which is established under Article 13, uh, really is uh, the backbone of uh, the agreement itself. Uh, specifically, uh, the ETF um, includes uh, guidance uh, for countries on how to report their greenhouse gases emissions, uh, the progress towards their NDCs commitments, uh, the climate change impacts uh, and adaptation, uh, and the support provided, mobilized, mobilized and, and needed. Uh, so a centerpiece uh, of the ETF are the BNL Transparency Reports, or BTR. Uh, which countries need to produce and submit uh, to the UNFCCC every uh, two years, uh, noting that uh, SEEDs and LTCs have uh, a little bit more flexibility and can submit at their uh, discretion. Uh, BTR has uh, operationalized the transfer of information about how countries are implementing the different aspects uh, of the Paris Agreement uh, and are therefore an essential tool for aligning climate action with the long-term goals of the Paris Agreement. By tracking and reporting on the success and implementation challenges of their climate pledges, countries will also in the process collect the necessary information to strengthen their ambition, identify new priority areas uh, for, climate factor, for climate action. In other words, BTRs and the process and systems that are necessary to put them together are not only a tool to track and report progress, but also to inform and enhance domestic decision making, which can now be based on reliable and systematized climate related information. As an operating entity of the financial mechanism, the Global Environment Facility has taken its mandate to support developing country parties in preparing the first and subsequent BTRs very seriously. We recognize the importance of engaging directly with countries and stakeholders and hearing their voices, challenges, and priorities. To this end, we've organized three informal consultations on BTRs since June 2020, and we use these opportunities to provide uh, updates on the support that is available to countries uh, for the preparation of BTRs uh, and uh, to receive feedbacks and inputs uh, on specific aspects, including access modalities and funding levels. As a way of an update, uh, we are happy to report that as of uh, April 1st uh, this year, the GEF supported 79 BTRs in 65 countries. Uh, with funding in excess of uh, $56 million. Uh, and so you can see how in some countries we are already funding uh, BTR 1 and 2 together. Um, and uh, it is also worth mentioning that this funding is separate from the resources that are allocated to countries through the GEF um, ex-ante allocation uh, of funds, uh, which is called the STAR system, uh, and also additional to the funds that are available for countries uh, under the Capacity Building Initiative for Transparency, or CBIT. Um, in addition to the 56 million that we provided for uh, BTRs, we have approved uh, about 150 million for uh, CBIT projects, most of which are now under implementation. Um, last year in July, the GEF started uh, the new phase uh, of funding, call it the GEF 8, uh, with a record replenishment of 5.3 billion. Uh, and compared to GEF 7, uh, the resources allocated to climate change set aside for the preparation of BTRs uh, increased substantially, uh, jumping from 110 million in GEF 7 to 145 million in GEF 8. So we believe these signal quite strongly the commitment of the entire GEF partnership to support the timely implementation of the ETF under the Paris Agreement. From what I said to, uh, from what I've said until now, it's quite clear that a lot of work has uh, been done to date. Uh, however, with limited time before the deadline for submission of the first BTR to UNFCCC Secretariat, close to 80 developing countries have yet to request support from the GEF. So we are really taking this opportunity to encourage all parties that haven't yet applied for GEF funding to do so at the earliest opportunities with a view of meeting the December 2024 deadline. Um, uh, the GEF jointly with the UNFCCC 
the Capacity Building Initiative for Transparency Global Support Program, has organized this series of webinars to raise awareness and inform developing countries on the access modalities and procedures from both the GEF and its implementing agencies on how to access BTR support resources. Uh, the webinar also comes in the val valuable participation of some of the GEF implementing agency, uh, namely the UNEP, uh, UNDP, and FAO. And uh, before I close, please allow me to thank, take this opportunity to thank uh, all of our partners for supporting us uh, in helping countries on their ETF journey. Um, with these, uh, I look forward to a successful and engaging discussion. And more importantly, we look very much forward to hearing back from you as soon as possible on how we can best serve you uh, as you start preparing your first uh, and subsequent PTRs. So thank you very much. And uh, back to you, uh, Fatima Zaha. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Filippo, for this, uh, these words. And thank you also for highlighting the importance that Jeff uh, gives to, uh, uh, to transparency and to funding uh, the BTR at this very important uh, junction uh, in the transition uh, towards the, the, the Paris Agreement. Um, also, I think it's really important that you highlighted the, the importance of reporting not only for uh, the UNFCCC, but also uh, at the national level. Uh, so I think that's, uh, that's an aspect that uh, developing countries should not uh, neglect uh, when uh, doing reporting. So thank you very much, uh, Filippo. With that, I would like uh, now uh, for us to do a very quick Mentimeter. So in the screen, you will see uh, the, the link to the Mentimeter uh, uh, website. Uh, it will be also put in the chat by one of my colleagues here, Alejandro or uh, Suzanne, and you have also the code. So please uh, go to the Mentimeter. We have only three questions uh, now. Uh, so to get us started. Para nuestros eh, compañeros hispanohablantes, eh, la primera pregunta es, ¿desde dónde nos acompañan ¿Desde hoy? Vemos que ya tenemos varias respuestas por toda Centroamérica, Sudamérica, a ver, vemos Argentina, Chile... Brasil, tenemos algunos compañeros también en África, en, en Caribe. La siguiente pregunta eh, dice, ¿ha solicitado ya su país del Jeff para su primer BTR, Biennial Transparency Report o Informe Bienal de Transparencia? Y estamos escribiendo también la pregunta en el chat. Vemos que ya las primeras respuestas indican que las, la, la mayoría de los respondientes ya han, eh, han aplicado para financiación del JEF. Mientras la otra mitad todavía o no ha aplicado para financiación o todavía no sabe cómo, en ese caso esperamos que este webinario sea eh, bastante útil para, para ustedes. Y la, pregunta, la, la, la tercera pregunta es para ustedes en varios casos, en casos que no... Eh, que no hayan eh, aplicado a financiación, eh, ¿por qué no se ha solicitado aún su país su para, para financiación del BTR? Y en caso afirmativo, ¿qué dificultades se han encontrado en el proceso? Hemos escrito la pregunta por el chat también para cualquier persona.
vemos que algunas de las respuestas ya incluyen, por ejemplo, entre uno de los, de los eh, challenges, de las dificultades, eh, se, in, se indica la duración del proceso, la lentitud del proceso. Algunas personas no tenían, no, no tenían conocimiento de la oportunidad. Se ve también que otro, otro de los comentarios es eh, la duración del proceso para solicitar fondos, la ventana de oportunidad. También vemos que algunos de nuestros colegas ya están en, en camino y están eh, finalizándolos y formulando los, los, eh, los, todos los documentos. Algunos otros con, compañeros ya están en el proceso de presentar su primer BUR. Y tenemos también algún comentario que indica el, el, la dificultad de aplicar a financiación para el BTR. Con esto terminamos de momento las, las primeras tres preguntas del, del cuestionario. Eh, muchas gracias por toda vuestra participación y esperamos que sea eh, informativa las próximas sesiones. Thank you very much, uh, Alejandro and Suzanne. Uh, very interesting uh, responses. Uh, so please feel free to uh, continue uh, with the survey even after the end of, uh, of this webinar. Uh, your responses will, will be really um, valuable for us uh, because we can uh, see what are uh, the barriers and what are the issues and try to address them uh, from the support organizations uh, side. So thank you very much for that. Uh, now, uh, before diving in, uh, a very quick uh, family photo. Uh, if you could have, please, your cameras on uh, very quickly and uh, wear your best smile as well. Very nice to see your faces. Some familiar ones, some not so familiar that we hope to get to know a little bit more uh, across the, the lifetime of, uh, of the project. Now we appreciate your patience since there are already several, uh, several uh, uh, files and several uh, rows of people with, uh, with their camera on. So thank you so much. We're taking several pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much all. Uh, we really appreciate this. So then uh, let us start with the, our first presentation today. So I would like to invite uh, Tibor Lindowski from the UNFCCC Secretariat to give us a brief overview of the provisions of the ETF, how they compare to the MRV arrangements under the convention in addition to some uh, important deadlines. Tibor, thank you for joining us today. Uh, you have the floor. Um, thank you very much, Fatima Zahra. I hope you can hear me well. And so we can hear you and see your screen. That's great. Um, so uh, let me also welcome everyone from the, from the UNFCCC side. And buenos, uh, buenos dias a todos. Let me also go very quickly through this uh, presentation as the, the main focus of this webinar is, uh, um, is a bit different. So this is just a, an introductory presentation for everyone to actually uh, or everyone hopefully already have a good uh, sense of what I will be talking about. So this presentation is related to transitioning towards the ETF and uh, the new reporting requirements. Let me, oh, sorry, let me go to the first slide. Um, here you can see the two different um, transparency arrangements. On the left-hand side, there's a transparency arrangement under the convention. And on the right-hand side, you can see the, the transparency framework or enhanced transparency framework under the Paris Agreement. Um, so as you probably know, under the current MRV system, we have two different stream. One is for, or two different processes. One is for develop, developed countries and uh, another one is from the developing countries. And the dark or the darker blue is for developing country parties. So uh, it's more relevant for this, uh, in this context. Um, so as you can see, um, 
under the current MRV system, developing countries are reporting uh, the information through their BNL update reports, and this will be um, superseded or replaced by the BNL transparency reports under the Paris Agreement. Um, the next stage is the technical analysis of the BURs, which will be superseded under the Paris Agreement by the technical expert review um, of the BNL transparency report. And uh, the last stage is currently the facilitative sharing of views under the convention, and this will be replaced by the facilitative multilateral consideration of progress under the Paris Agreement. Um, when it comes to the enhanced transparency framework, there are a few key areas I would like to mention. Um, first of all, and uh, most importantly, there are more, most of the provisions that are under the uh, enhanced transparency framework are shell provisions, which means that um, they are mandatory for all countries. This is not the case under the current um, reporting under the MRV system. So this is one of the main differ differences and enhancements. Secondly, um, as you know, there have been uh, the, the modalities, procedures, and guidelines um, established and um, agreed on um, back in Katowice. Um, this also applies to all the parties or all the countries with the flexibility to those developing countries that need it in their light of their capacities. So the idea is that all the countries are using the same modalities, procedures, and guidelines when they are preparing their biennial transparency reports. But for those developing countries that need it in the light of their capacities, they have the flexibility. Um, the next one is also very much linked to the flexibility element, and that's the continuous improvement. That means that uh, while using the flexibility in reporting, um, there is a need uh, for also continuous improvement um, to the extent possible. That means that countries should uh, identify and regularly update and report on the areas of, uh, of improvement. And last but not least, um, the enhancement of the com uh, in the context of compliance, whereas uh, under Article 15, a, com uh, a committee has been established and it serves as a mechanism to facilitate the implementation and promote the compliance under the Paris Agreement. When I move to the next slide, um, it seems quite busy, so let me um, also try to navigate a bit. Um, firstly, when it comes to the uh, milestones, uh, we can see that there is a clear red line in the year 2024. It's been mentioned already by Felipe as well as Fatima Zahra. This is the year uh, by which the final biennial update reports by developing country parties um, shall be uh, submitted at the latest. So the deadline is the 31st December 2024 for the biennial update reports. Um, while I have already mentioned that the, the current process of the BNA update reports, the technical analysis, and the facilitative sharing of views will be replaced by uh, BTRs, the technical expert review, and the facilitative sharing, uh, facilitative multilateral, multilateral consideration of progress under the Paris Agreement. Um, then, when we look at the right hand side, uh, or on the right hand side, uh, after the 2024, um, it doesn't apply only to developing countries, but it applies to all the countries um, that they shall um, submit their first BNL transparency report at the, at the latest by 31st December um, 2024, while uh, the SEEDs and the LDCs have uh, discretion when submitting their first uh, BTRs. That means that uh, they don't necessarily have to uh, follow the, this provision. Um, the second and the third, as I mentioned already, the technical expert review of the BNL transparency report, once they are submitted, will be initiated immediately after the submission. And then the following and the last step of the process um, is the FMCP, the Facilitative Multilateral Consideration of Progress, which I have already mentioned as well. And this will be um, following the publication of the technical expert review report um, as soon as possible. Um, the third element is the flexibility uh, that I've already mentioned, as well as the improved reporting and transparency uh, uh, over time. So this is, again, 
link to the um, reporting as now under the enhanced transparency framework, we are talking about all parties. Um, there is a flexibility and there is um, a necessary improvement uh, or reporting on the improvement over time. Um, last but not least, there are um, two activities or, or two processes that will continue um, through the 2024 and, uh, and beyond. One is the technical analysis of the Red Plus activities for results-based incentives. And the second one is the submission of the national communications, uh, which uh, developing country parties might still um, submit it as part or together actually jointly with the BTRs in a, in a single report. But I think more about the arrangements and possible funding opportunities will be discussed um, later on. And uh, this brings me to the last slide where I would just like to uh, mention a number of points. Uh, first of all, um, as you know, the operational details are already in place for the full implementation of the ETF, uh, meaning the modalities, procedures, and guidelines, or the common tabular formats and the common reporting tables, which parties um, shall use when they are reporting the information. All of them has been or has been agreed already, and uh, they are ready to be used by by countries. Um, secondly, it's also important to use the existing MRV system and the institutional arrangements and the processes that are in place in your countries and build on these processes and, and system, use it as a, as a starting point really for the ETF. Um, as you know, this is a, it's a really good basis and um, it helps uh, also to actually share some of the lessons learned and the success stories with, uh, with other countries or even sometimes domestically of the subnational level. Um, this is something that will definitely be helpful and will facilitate the uh, implementation of the enhanced transparency framework in, uh, in your countries. Um, lastly, um, when it comes to, of course, ETF, um, it doesn't only um, serve as a, as, a, as, a, as a submission, as a, as a platform to submit a report, but the enhanced transparency framework goes beyond and includes a lot of national benefits. Um, for example, there is, uh, of course, the understanding of potential for action um, and also when collecting in the data, climate relevant data and submitting under the enhanced transparency framework. This data can be further used also by the policy, ma policy makers and the policy or, or, and the decision makers who can then uh, um, shape the, the domestic national climate policies um, in a more um, kind of in a more in a, in a better way so that it tackles and uh, and addresses the needs of the countries. Um, secondly, it also helps in establishing channels um, to ensure adequate support. So in this case, we are talking mostly about um, that the information that is collected and submitted is also very useful for um, support providers because through this, you can also identify the, the needs um, of the country and articulate better what exactly um, is the need and, uh, and what, is, uh, what kind of support is, uh, is actually required from the uh, support providers. Um, and lastly, the platform, it's of course a platform to learn from each other, to exchange views and uh, to, um, to share the experiences that uh, countries already have. Um, that's why um, I think uh, I can say that we are very glad for the UNFCCC side as well that the Jeff has already put in place all the necessary arrangements for the financial resources um, for the BTRs and during now it's time for countries to apply and access the funds as soon as possible because as already mentioned a number of times the, the deadline for submitting the first BTRs is uh, really fast approaching. And it's it's really now I'm very timely to to start approaching uh, Jeff and I think this webinar is a very good opportunity for all of you to learn more about how to access what are the modalities to access the funding uh, from Jeff and of course through the implementing um, agencies and uh, and partners. With that, uh, thank you very much, Fatima, um, and I pass it back to you. 
Thank you very much, uh, Tibor, for this very informative presentation. Uh, I think uh, it was uh, it was brief, but uh, we uh, I see already some questions about it in the chat that uh, can be addressed uh, later. But we will be organizing further webinars and further trainings on uh, specifically on uh, on the requirements of the ETF and the BTR. So don't worry, we will get uh, get to it uh, uh, at a later stage. Uh, so thank you very much, Tibor. And uh, uh, we will take uh, questions after our next presentation. Uh, now I would like uh, to to um, welcome uh, Esteban uh, from uh, our colleague from Jeff, who will be uh, who will be uh, presenting to us uh, the the uh, the sorry, more information on the support available from, uh, from Jeff, the various modalities that uh, countries can, uh, can opt for uh, that uh, uh, already Philipp Filippo has mentioned uh, a couple of them, uh, but uh, Esteban uh, will have uh, more details and uh, also will tell us a little bit on the other supports that Jeff provide, uh, provides, uh, namely also the, the CIBIT, the national CIBIT projects. So uh, thank you uh, Esteban for joining, joining us. Uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Fatima. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Just okay, perfect. So, uh, well, first of all, uh, thank you. Uh, thanks to to UNFCCC and CVGSP for co-organizing these webinars. Uh, this is the third session. Uh, the previous days we had uh, similar webinars with other regions, uh, and and as Tibor said by the end of his presentation, we want to make sure that the information is there. And if you have any questions after my presentation, we will have a Q&A. Thank you as well to the Regional Collaboration Center. And of course, to, to all the participants that are joining today. So uh, from the, the GEF, the Global Environment Facility, uh, as Filippo was mentioning in his um, in his opening remarks, uh, we are providing support for the preparation of uh, BTRs. And as a matter of fact, the GEF uh, provides support uh, related to the enhanced transparency framework uh, in three main areas. So today we will focus on the reports, uh, BTRs, the biennial transparency reports, uh, and national communications that uh, can also be combined with DTRs. Uh, but we also provide support uh, through the Capacity Building Initiative for Transparency that I will uh, explain briefly. And, and some of you may have an ongoing project uh, from CIVIT, but we also provide support through uh, global projects like the uh, CIVIT uh, Global Support Program that is uh, uh, led by, by Fatima and her team. Um, so we will not uh, talk much about the uh, CVIT GSP, but uh, some weeks ago uh, we we had the launch of the of the networks from CVIT GSP, and I'm pretty sure that uh, there will be many other events to come. So related to BTRs, uh, the Jeff has provided support already for the preparation of 79 BTRs in 65 countries. Uh, which you can see in the map. Some of them have requested support uh, for their BTR1 and BTR2, uh, which are the ones with a darker color in the map. Uh, this adds up to more than $56 million so far, uh, but we continue to receive more, more uh, requests uh, for support. Um, there are different modalities that I will explain uh, shortly. And some countries uh, have decided to uh, top up with their star allocation if they feel like they need additional resources, like the countries that are mentioned, Brazil, India, Malaysia, Mexico, and Nigeria. So if you're not very familiar with the GEF terminology, uh, the GEF provides support to countries, uh, at least in terms of climate change, through their star allocation. Uh, and countries uh, know in advance how much funds they will receive from the GEF and they decide how to invest them. But in addition to that star allocation, 
uh, there is a set aside for the preparation of reports like PTRs and also for CIVIT. So sometimes uh, if countries ask uh, if uh, the preparation of these BTRs may impact their star location. The answer is no. It's on top of your star location. Uh, and projects for uh, BTRs and CVIT are approved on a rolling basis. So it, it's very important to take into consideration. Um, and we have three agencies uh, so far uh, providing support for, for the preparation of BTRs, which are UNEP, UNDP, and FAO that we'll present uh, later on. In the case of Latin America and the Caribbean, this is a zoom in from the map that I was showing before. Uh, we have supported 12 countries so far, um, and four of them have already requested support for the preparation of their first BTR and second BTR. And almost 70% of the countries in the region have an ongoing uh, CVIT project. Uh, so um, it's very important because there is great com complementarity between CVIT and, and the preparation of the BTRs. Uh, and uh, we still have some countries uh, in the region, in Latin America and the Caribbean, that uh, will, uh, we're expecting to receive more proposals. So that's part of the reason why we are here today. In the case of CVIT, uh, it was launched in 2016. Uh, we have 89 projects in 88 countries, which is uh, more, more or less uh, almost $150 million. Uh, you can see some of the countries in the MOP. Most of them are active. Uh, we still have some projects that are under review. And what is very important is that um, if you have a CVIT project that will finish uh, its implementation soon, we will provide support for a second phase uh, of CVIT. So also uh, it's very important and we will look uh, that both uh, phase one and phase two uh, complement each other, that there is a, a good link between them, but so that you know that you also have that uh, support uh, and there are also global projects. Uh, FAO uh, ran uh, two global projects related to uh, the forest sector and AFOLU. And there was a predecessor uh, project uh, also between UNDP. Uh, oh, sorry, the light in my office turned off. Um, and we have seven agencies uh, providing support for CVIT. So, uh, the Jeff works in um, replenishment for year replenishments, and very important to mention that for reports, the support increased more than 32% uh, compared to the previous replenishment, and the same for CVIT, more than 36%. And based on COP guidance, we conducted three informal consultations and updated the cost of BTRs in July last year, which I will mention briefly. Uh, and it's also possible to combine a uh, PTR1, PTR2, and a national communication under uh, the same enabling activity project. So you don't have to uh, submit three different uh, proposals. You can combine them in one. And we are expecting uh, a growing demand for BTRs for the countries that are left, uh, as well as uh, countries that may want to receive support for CVIT, or the second phase of CVIT. So in terms of modalities, there are three modalities. The first one is uh, if a country uh, wants to, to prepare their BTR as standalone, so just one BTR, it's uh, up to $600,000. Uh, and again, it's financed by a set aside additional to the star allocation. And it has been available since January 2021. Uh, and the condition is that the country must not have an ongoing biennial update report. Uh, and before January this year, it was acceptable to have an ongoing national communication. Then there is also the possibility to combine the preparation of the BTR and the national communication, because 
as some of you may know, there is a significant overlap between the two uh, reports and countries can request up to $633,000. And the condition is uh, not to have a ongoing national communication or BUR. And the third um, modality is uh, a top up. So if you are currently pre preparing your BUR or national communication, and you will not probably be able to submit it uh, soon. Uh, so what you can do is that you can request additional resources from the GEF. So with the information and all the progress you have in the preparation of your ongoing EUR or national communication, you can use those additional resources to also prepare your BTR and submit it to the UNFCCC in time. So this last modality was um, launched or, or it became available in January this year. And it's only intended for the first BTR. Uh, so a country could also request under the same uh, proposal, amendment of their uh, ongoing uh, enabling activity for their first BTR and combine it with uh, the preparation of their second BTR and national communication if they wish. So I hope uh, uh, my presentation was clear and happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, uh, Esteban, uh, for uh, for this presentation. Uh, I hope that now the various modalities that are available for countries depending on their own circumstances are a bit more clear. Uh, however, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to raise your hand or write it in the chat. There were quite a few question, uh, questions relating to uh, Tibor's presentations, but my colleagues uh, uh, Tibor and uh, also Paolo, our network coordinator, and uh, Billy and Eva, uh, they have uh, addressed, uh, I think, all of them uh, for now in the chat. Uh, so if there are any further ones, please do raise your hand. I see Edgar, uh, please go ahead. Hello, good good evening. My, well, good morning, I feel like say. My name is Edgar Hunter and I'm from Dominica. And Dominica haven't applied yet for the financing. So um, we haven't done a BUR. Um, what modality would Estefans recommend for us? And number two, in terms of the agencies, um, is it only um, UNDP, UNEP, and FAO that can work with countries on BTR? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Esteban. Edgar. Uh, so uh, if you don't have any ongoing uh, BUR or national communication, uh, you can request support for uh, the preparation of your first PTR and national communication. Um, and if you wish, you can also combine it uh, with the preparation of your second BTR. So it would be BTR1, BTR2, national communication that adds up to 1,200,000 thousand and two hundred and thirty three thousand dollars um, and you can work with any of the Jeff agencies uh, the Jeff has 18 agencies what I presented was the three agencies that uh, are supporting countries so far are UNDP UNEP uh, and FAO and uh, you can engage with your uh, operational focal point, of course, who endorses the, the projects, uh, but you can work with any agency that, that you wish. I hope that answers your question. You sure did, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you both. Uh, we have a question in the chat uh, also for you, Esteban. Uh, it's, uh, it says, uh, whether the countries with current CIBIT and funding for the BUR uh, have to apply for the uh, top-up option as soon as possible and before the current CIBIT ends, I guess before the current BUR uh, ends. Yeah, so that's the question. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Marie Carmen, the CIBIT and the BTRs are independent. 
So if you're if just if, in case there is confusion there, um, and of course you can request support for, for your Vivid uh, phase two. And yes, we encourage countries to, to request support as soon as possible, including for the, the top up. Uh, so you have enough time in advance because as Steve mentioned in his presentation with the red line, uh, countries that are not seeds or, or LDCs have to comply with this deadline by uh, December 31st, uh, 2024. I hope that uh, that clarifies because the top up option is only for uh, the BUR so that you can uh, submit also in addition to the BUR, the, the BTR probably at the same time, but the CIBIT project is uh, independent. Uh, good. Any further questions, colleagues? Just to clarify, uh, yeah. Fatima, if I may, mm -hmm. uh, if a country has an ongoing national communication or BUR, then they can use modality three, top the top up. So it's both national communications or BUR uh, because there is great uh, complementarity or overlap between BTRs and these two type mm -hmm. of reports. Yeah. And uh, also to, to clarify, the countries would need to submit both the BUR and the BTR. Yes. Uh, good. Thank you very much. Uh, I do not see any further questions. I see uh, uh, Edgar. Is that an old hand? I think. Yeah. yeah so. I'll just ask you again. Yeah. Good. In terms of, of the CBIT, what type of projects are supported under the CBIT? So uh, CBIT is actually quite uh, uh, flexible. Uh, they are, uh, of course, related to Article 13 of the Paris Agreement. Uh, but they support uh, to countries to strengthen their technical capacities or institutional arrangements with regards to uh, the, the ETF. So uh, projects are very uh, country driven. I, I wouldn't say there is a, a specific uh, formula, but some of the countries include capacity building in specific topics uh, related to um, ETF, or if there are certain aspects like uh, the, the institutional arrangements that are needed uh, for the preparation of reports uh, or specific uh, technical components uh, related to emission factors. But again, uh, I, I think what I would recommend is that you contact uh, one of the, of the Jeff agencies uh, and they can uh, help you prepare the, the proposal based on your country needs. Um, I will also share a brochure in the chat uh, that has more information about the CVIT, but something that we are very proud of is that uh, CVIT is, is very flexible and uh, country driven. So uh, countries set their own priorities on the areas they need. And that is why we expect in a second phase of CVIT that countries based on their own experiences uh, will continue to, to work on new areas or new challenges that they have found in their previous uh, phase. Thank you very much, uh, Esteban. Uh, I hope that clarifies. So now that we have learned uh, about the various modalities that are available from Jeff and the related funding, uh, let us now move uh, to uh, basically how you can access uh, this funding uh, through the various implementing agencies uh, of Jeff. So uh, we have the pleasure to have with us uh, today, actually the three uh, implementing agencies, uh, UNEP, UNDP, and the FAO. Uh, so let me first uh, welcome UNEP, uh, who will be uh, giving us uh, more information on how to access uh, Jeff funding uh, through uh, their modalities. Uh, Elka uh, Vabuzia uh, has kindly agreed to give us this presentation. Elka, you have the floor. Um, uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Fatima. So uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. So I'm going to give my presentation on behalf of uh, uh, UNEP on BTR uh, uh, financing. Okay. 
So generally, my, uh, my presentation will focus on the current uh, countries that are being supported by UNEP. Uh, the status of transitioning, then the implementation uh, status of the BTR that we we are already supporting, and uh, also the how you can be able to access the JEF funds. So in general, UNEP, we are supporting about 88 countries to prepare their national communication BUR and BTR. All these countries as uh, spread across uh, Africa, uh, Latin America, and the Caribbean. Uh, Asia and Pacific and, uh, and Europe. So generally we have about um, 13 countries in Latin uh, America and the Caribbean, around 42 countries in Africa. Then Asia is about uh, Asia and the Pacific is 31 and two in uh, Europe. So far uh, in the Latin America and the Caribbean, out of the 13 uh, countries that we support, uh, seven countries have so far transitioned to BTR preparation. That is Antigua, Barbuda, uh, the Bahamas, uh, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, Argentina, Dominican Republic, and uh, Ecuador. These are the seven countries that have already received uh, uh, BTR uh, funding. So it's either a BTR standalone, a combined NC and BTR, or a bundle. That is two BTRs and a national communication. The remaining uh, six countries uh, from our end are yet to uh, uh, request for funds for BTR preparation. So in general, UNEP has about uh, supporting about uh, 54 countries. So uh, for the standard loans, we have 20 countries, uh, 20 projects uh, standard loan. The combined is 17, and then we have bundled which is the two BTRs and a national communication in 11. Then uh, countries have received uh, funding for, for, for the top, top project. So all these countries are at the different stages in the uh, implementation. So we have uh, countries that are still signing the project agreement between UNEP and the executing agency, which are about eight countries with a different uh, project, either an uh, national um, BTR standalone or a combined BTR or uh, a bundled. Then uh, we have 31 countries that are in the planning stage. So it's either they already have an implementation plan they are or they are preparing an implementation plan to support the implementation of their BTR project. Then uh, we have uh, 14 countries that have already uh, prepared uh, finalize the implementation plan and they have started implementing the BTR projects. So accessing funds uh, for the countries for UNEP, we use uh, two main uh, processes. One is the expedited or, and the other one is the non-expedited. So for the expedited process, it's basically through the standalone uh, countries where a country sub, uh, submits a, a proposal as a standalone or through the medium-sized projects, whereby you get maybe one or more uh, countries that can be able to sub, uh, submit their proposal, uh, which should not be more than 2 million. For the medium-sized projects, uh, we can have maybe two or three countries coming together, and we support them to prepare a proposal, which is not more than 2 million for submission to the GEF. And for the standalone, again, uh, the project should not be more than 2 million. So for the standard loan or the expedited process, it takes uh, between three to six months. And uh, by the end of the day, we have a fully uh, developed, uh, pro developed proposal, which, which has an implemented uh, work plan and uh, a budget. And this is uh, uh, approved by the GEF on a rolling basis. So we have uh, about four con three countries that have taken this approach. That is uh, Moldova, Malaysia, and Vietnam that are applied through the expedited process. Then the second modality that we use is through the umbrellas. And this is for projects that are more than uh, uh, 2 million. And in this, uh, in this modality is where we get multiple countries with different projects under one umbrella program. And this takes not more than uh, 12 months. And one of the difference is that for the umbrella programs, they have to 
uh, to get the Jeff Council approval. So in parallel to preparation of this umbrella program, uh, now countries have to be, countries under this program have to prepare their own implementation plans because uh, generally the program will have uh, a very generic uh, information, but by the end of the day, each country now has to prepare its own uh, implementation uh, plan and a budget. So for the last uh, uh, approval that we got uh, for the umbrella, it had the 43 countries that were being supported to prepare their BTRs, uh, either standalone, the combined NC and B BTR, or the bundled. So for, for UNEP, I'll just give you an illustration on the processes of uh, uh, receiving funds through the expedited or the process that takes between three to six months. So for this uh, modality, I say that you can have either a single a country where the country prepares a uh, UNEP, shares the guidance notes with the, uh, the GEF templates with the country that is interested to be to prepare the proposal and guide them through uh, the proposal preparation. So one of the things that we require from the country is a letter of endorsement uh, signed by the GEF operational focal point. So the country submits the draft uh, proposal, which we review in consultation with the country until we get the final document, which we thereafter submit it uh, uh, to UNEP, circulate it to within uh, our U, uh, UNEP internal processes for clearance, review and clearance. After the project is cleared internally, then we submit it to the GEF. So upon submission to the GEF, the GEF will be able to review and provide comments where necessary. So if the comments are able, we are able to address comments internally within UNEP, we do that. And if the comments need uh, answers from the country, then we go back to the country to get uh, 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 the, the, the feedback on that. So ideally from uh, the proposal preparation from the country is one to two months, review and finalization, a maximum of two months, UNEP's internal clearance, a maximum of one week. And then once we have submitted to the GEF, it's one to two months uh, for the GEF to review and approve. Then finally, uh, we are able to receive the GEF approval letter and the commitment letter between one to two months. So depending on the capacity of the country, this process can take between two, uh, three to, uh, to six months. At times it can go beyond that, or it can be uh, maybe even four months. So for the, under the same um, uh, uh, process for the expedited, we can also have uh, uh, a medium-sized uh, proposal where you can have either more than one countries within one proposal. And this is where by now UNEP drafts the proposal and we get the letter of commitments from the different countries that are interested to be part of this proposal as a way of their commitment. So, and we also get additional countries uh, specific information that we include in this proposal. We uh, uh, finalize the proposal, then it undergoes through the uh, circulated for UNEP uh, internal uh, clearance, and then submitted to the GEF, which reviews and provides comments, and finally the proposal is approved. So for the uh, medium-sized project, again, you'll see that we have uh, different countries uh, within the, uh, the, the, the MSP proposal. So again, in parallel, we guide the countries to be able to just prepare an implementation plan and a work plan, uh, a work plan and a budget, which is very country specific and also uh, provide any additional information that we require. So once we get the GEF approval and the commitment letter, so internally now it takes about two to three months for UNEP to sign an agreement with the country and transfer the uh, cash to support the implementation of the project. So here the country is responsible for setting up their own project bank account and also setting up the teams and, and the implementation structures. So as the next step uh, moving forward, uh, what we are currently doing is that uh, we 
have already alerted countries that have received uh, uh, their funds for the BTR. And uh, we are also uh, requesting countries to be able to uh, uh, speed up the finalization of their current national communication on BUR to be able to transition to the BTR. Then for the countries that have already received funds, we are, have commenced signing agreements with, with the countries. And also we are guiding the countries to prepare their implementation plan so that they can commence implementing the project with an aim of meeting the December 2024 uh, uh, project deadline. Then in terms of supporting additional countries on BTR funding, we are going to focus on the expedited uh, uh, process where we'll, we'll, we'll either support single country proposal where a country can be able to prepare its own standalone BTR, a combined NC and BTR or a, a bundled uh, BTR, which is two BTRs and NC. And the other option that we are all going to also focus on is a, a one-step medium-sized project for not more than 2 million. So that means that uh, this will basically focus on countries that have ongoing uh, BURs or national communication and BUR to access the top-up funds of uh, 250. So for this step, we will basically uh, focus on countries that we have a valid uh, national communication or BUR active uh, projects because uh, uh, for, this, uh, for this modality, it means that it's uh, the funds, the 250 or the BTR funds have to be topped up on the ongoing uh, process. So we, our main focal point for, for, for UNEP is uh, Ms. Susan Lokayet. So in case uh, any country and it's any clarification, any questions or needs uh, further support, we'll be happy to, uh, to provide that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Elka, for your presentation. Now I have the pleasure to invite uh, Eva Hutova from, uh, from UNDP uh, to present us with the access modalities from the UNDP side. Eva, you have the floor. Thank you, Fatima Zahra, and good morning, good afternoon to everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Please let me know if uh, uh, you can see it. Yes, wow. perfect. Okay, great. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so my name is Eva Hutova and I'm a global technical specialist uh, at UNDP supporting the transparency portfolio of projects. So I will also provide a presentation on the access modality to chat funding from uh, UNDP uh, site. So the outline of my presentation is to give you an overview on uh, the current PTR and BTR NC projects portfolio that UNDP is supporting. Uh, information on the access modalities that are available to countries uh, if uh, they decide to, uh, to request support from UNDP as the implementing agency. Overview of uh, the step-by-step -step process. And uh, then, of course, the information on the focal points uh, within our organization uh, in case uh, um, the support is to be requested by the country. So this slide uh, is uh, providing an overview of uh, on our portfolio. Currently, UNDP has uh, seven uh, BTR and BTR NC projects under implementation. Four projects are already indoors or approved by the JEP CEO and are currently waiting for the internal clearance or pending product signature. Uh, five projects are submitted to the JEP Secretariat for review and approval. We are working with uh, additional 12 countries, uh, preparing the proposals for submission, and uh, additional nine countries have expressed interest to work with UNDP to access funding for the preparation of their BTR and BTR uh, and SIP projects. So as it comes for uh, the access modalities for countries, UNDP is following the three modalities uh, as previously presented by the JEP Secretariat colleagues. Under JEP 8, we provide support to countries to access financing for uh, two BTRs and uh, one combined uh, 
For the BTRs, have one national communication as it is applicable for each country as part of the same enabling activity project. The funding that is available to countries is up to is up to one million two hundred thirty three thousand from Jeff set aside funds. And uh, if a country consider it uh, necessary, they can also top up this amount with uh, uh, their start allocation. So depending on the size of the, the, the grant that is being requested, uh, one of the following modalities is being followed. So if uh, the total amount is below 2 million, it is expedited one step approval process and the proposal can be submitted in rolling basis. If the total amount uh, requested exceeds two million, uh, then there is a need to follow to step approval process and uh, the Jeff Council work program schedule. And in addition to that, we for the projects that have ongoing NCNBUR, for the countries that have ongoing NCNBUR projects uh, with duration up to or beyond December 2024, there is also an option to request funding for the first BTR through a top-up modality. Uh, funding available is 250,000 from just set aside funds. And uh, this modality follows one step uh, approval process for climate change and I think activities and can be submitted on a rolling basis too. So on this slide, you can see the overview of the process uh, that uh, is uh, being followed if country is interested to work with UNDP. So first, country needs to submit a request to UNDP country office resident representative. There is no specific template. It can be either email or government letter and should typically come from, from the operational focal point. If uh, the letter comes uh, from a different, uh, uh, from a different uh, authority, then we request that the JAF operational focal point is informed. Uh, the next step after the receipt of the government request for support is the capacity assessment process. It usually takes uh, two weeks and it focuses on uh, the assessment of the capacity of the UNDP country office uh, to, to support uh, the project and also on the capacities of the implementing partner. Uh, this uh, the the capacity of assessment of the implementing partner focuses mostly on the assessment of risk uh, that uh, for the project implementation and on the selection of the appropriate implementation modality. Uh, in case uh, there is no valid assessment, uh, it this process can actually take longer, uh, as it requires uh, hacked assessments to be to be completed. Uh, the next, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, so the after the capacity assessment process is finalized, uh, we proceed with the development of the project proposal. This stage usually take two to three months, and uh, with the support of the UNDP country office and our regional hubs and directorate, uh, country is completing enabling activity requests, project document with mandatory annexes. Uh, Jeff operational focal point endorsement letter, Jeff checklist for audit, risk review, social and environmental safeguards, gender analysis and action plan, and uh, other documents as may be required for submission to the Jeff uh, Next step after the development of the proposal is UNDP internal clearance and submission to the Jeff Secretariat, which typically takes around two weeks. And uh, the review and approval process by the Judge Secretariat, uh, which in average lasts two to three months. All UNDP projects uh, are also required to be submitted for four weeks to the Judge Council for a, for a review and comments before the final Judge uh, CEO approval is granted. So once the approval is uh, granted, uh, UNDP completes uh, internal clearance and issue uh, delegation of authority letter uh, for, the, for the signature of the project document. The signature of the project document uh, is, then, um, is then also a start date for the implementation phase of the project uh, under which uh, the project is uh, executing activities and reaching uh, um, milestones such as uh, first disbursement of funds, inception workshop, uh, annual status survey, submission of reports to the UNFCCC, preparation of the end of project report with lessons learned, 
and operational and financial closure. So lastly, um, these are our focal points. Uh, so for all countries that would like to select UNDP as their uh, job implementing agency for the preparation of the BTR and BTR and C projects, the primary focal point is UNDP country office based in the country, but at the regional and global level, they can also reach out to me or to our senior technical advisor, Claudia Ortiz. So thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I'm also happy to answer any questions from the audience. Thank you so much, uh, Eva, for your presentation. And uh, now, last but not least, of course, uh, our colleague from the FAO, Mirella. Mirella, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Fatima Zara, for this opportunity. And buenas tardes, buen días a todos que están participando en uh, esta reunión. Eh, FAO supporto on BTR preparation. So, uh, differently from our colleagues uh, uh, of UNDP and, and UNEP, uh, FAO uh, is a pretty new in the uh, supporting country in uh, uh, the enabling activity. So, our portfolio is uh, still. Uh, uh, quite small, uh, but uh, FAO is a support in many countries in the, the Jeff CBAT projects. And uh, based on, on that, it came quite natural uh, for us working on transparency issues. Uh, so starting supporting also country in accessing the enabling activity for the preparation of the biannual transparency report. So far, we have an active uh, uh, the activity in two countries, uh, both of them in Latin America, so it's in Nicaragua and Chile, that they are both of them under implementation. Uh, regarding the BTR supporting modality for countries, uh, we have a differentiated uh, discussion, but uh, for what is required in Nicaragua, for SPWR and for national communication, and there is under discussion the potential for top up modality for the first BTR. Uh, for Chile, is the first PTR and the fifth national communication. On the discussion, we have other four countries so far where we are more trying to use what is possible, the bundle modalities of a first and second BTR combined with a national, one national communication. Um, and that is the actual status of our uh, our support. So looking at a little bit of the overview of the process, uh, first of all, uh, for requesting uh, support, uh, be trying to be sure that you inform your UNFCC and Jeff over operational focal point in case that we are talking about uh, Ministry of Environment of, or someone that is doing the coordination of the previous reporting. Uh, so uh, once uh, you, you have uh, some a discussion so you can contact the FAO local office in, in the country and uh, in, you can include in the communication as again also in these cases we are talking about just a very informal email uh, indicating your interest uh, to request for uh, the for FAO to be the implementing agency. You can include uh, the focal point, uh, the uh, global ones that they are in the next slides and requesting a call for defining the next step and also to identify which one is the BTR supporting modalities that is more uh, suitable for your country. Uh, for initiating the real process, so, uh, we will need to have a submission of the letter of endorsement from the uh, Jeff operational focal point to our Jaffa focal point um, and uh, the FAO transparency team uh, um, will initiate it together with uh, the, the country and the government uh, in uh, providing some guidance and templates for the preparation of the project proposal and the implementation plan. And uh, we will be uh, responsible also for the review of the government inputs uh, based on a uh, uh, few desk, uh, uh, desk review assessment or country driven assessment, uh, looking at the capacity of the country of uh, address Addressing uh, the requirement of uh, the biennial transparency report. Um, based on, uh, on, on that, uh, the overall process uh, requires, on average, uh, um, 
18, 20 weeks. So that is a, in a, an ideal process. It means that hoping that we are not getting really closer to the uh, to the deadline of December 2024, where everyone is then looking for uh, having this opportunity uh, to access these funds. So just consider it to, uh, to do that uh, on time. Um, and the, the process uh, is, uh, as we were saying, first the submission of the letter of endorsement, uh, receiving uh, the first draft of the product, uh, where it will be formulated mostly from the uh, from FAO side with the template, with some uh, insight from uh, the uh, the country, uh, country office. It, it will be subject to a review from the governments, uh, where they provide inputs on the definition of the elements, and then there is a time for the finalization and the validation of the product that will be submitted to the GEF for comments. Comments will be addressed and then resubmitted, uh, looking then for the GEF approval. Um, and then the project the startup will start in a few weeks in order to have the internal process uh, at FAO for the disbursements and for proceeding then uh, in order requirement. Uh, based on uh, the experience we had so far in other countries, uh, let's say that the government commitment and priorities are highly required for speeding up the process, assuring a timing, uh, uh, supporting the review and the inputs that are provided uh, to the country. Um, and in, in, in ensure so a smooth, uh, a smooth process. So regarding the focal point, uh, the FAO Jeff focal point is uh, Jeffrey uh, Griffin and uh, myself is uh, for the transparency and the enabling activity focal point. Uh, so we thank you so much and we really hope that we can support you in uh, this process. Thank you very much, uh, Mirella, for your presentation. Uh, hopefully now uh, we have the, all the different uh, modalities uh, of access through the, the, the various agencies. It is up to countries to, uh, uh, to choose the, the one that uh, they would like to work with. We have already a few questions in, uh, in the chat. Um, I will start with the first question that's basically uh, addressed uh, to UNAP and to, um, uh, to Jeff. Uh, I'm not very clear of the question to um, to UNEP, so uh, Janil, you might uh, uh, intervene after this uh, so that you can clarify probably a little bit more. Uh, but the questions uh, to uh, is to Esteban uh, are quite clear. So uh, she's saying since um, since they are in the initial stage of the BTR one uh, that is due. Uh, uh, the initial stage of their third national communication and BOR1, and since the BTR1 is due in December, uh, are they eligible to pursue a joint uh, third national communication BTR instead of pursuing a BOR1? Thank you. That is a very good question. So, um, the, the current project would uh, still need to submit the BUR and the national communication. And the additional resources would allow to submit the BTR as well. So uh, receiving support for the BTR would not cancel an ongoing uh, report, so to say. Um, the, the rationale behind this is that uh, and there is significant overlap between uh, BURs, national communications, and BTR. So we would expect that the uh, additional effort wouldn't be uh, that that much. But um, so uh, again, it, it's country by country the, the analysis. But uh, to the answering the question, uh, receiving support for BTR not does not cancel an ongoing uh, report. So thank you, Esteban. So just to summarize, so they can opt for the third modality, the top-up modality, but they would have to uh, to basically submit the three reports, the third national communication, BUR1 and BTR1 uh, at the same time. Good, thank you very much. There is an additional question for you, Esteban. Uh, can CIBIT support, so the national CIBIT uh, project support, uh, be used to retain additional staff to support ETF activities? 
Uh, okay. Can you repeat the question? Sorry, I didn't get it. Uh, it says, uh, can the, the resources from the CIBIT, the National CIBIT uh, project support, um, uh, the, um, uh, can, can it be used to retain additional staff to support ETF activities in the country? So if, if the project... Uh, if, if they can use the resources um, from CIBIT project uh, uh -huh. to retain staff, that can support transparency activities in the country. Yes, yeah, so um, the, the, it, it, it would depend on the project design and if the project is ongoing or if it's a new project, but definitely uh, you can hire experts to provide support and, and topics that are related to ETF, but, um, but I'm not sure if, if it is to, change the budget of an ongoing CBIT to support staff, perhaps that, that would require an additional conversation. But uh, I can leave my, my email in the chat. And perhaps if you have a specific concern or anybody here that has uh, any other questions, uh, you can reach out, of course. Thank you very much, uh, Esteban. Uh, Janil, as I said, uh, I'm not very clear what was the question for uh, the first question for UNEP. So if you would like to take the floor and uh, uh, and clarify. Thank you, Fatima. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, it was answered already by okay. Esteban. Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. So we have another question uh, from uh, Elune. Uh, so uh, thanks for uh, Alejandro for translating. So uh, it's also for UNEP. Are there any differences in the steps, the timelines and approval and disbursement processes uh, for the countries uh, a part of the umbrella program in regard to the simple modality described during your presentation, uh, Elka? Uh, thanks, Alejandro. So for the umbrella program, uh, one, of, uh, one of the differences is it's uh, uh, for more than 2 million. And that takes a longer period because uh, one, the, we prepare the concept, which we call the, the PIF. It is cleared, it's, it's reviewed uh, by the Jeff Secretariat and thereafter circulated, for, circulated uh, among the Jeff Council for inclusion in the Jeff uh, program, uh, uh, program of work after which we get into preparing a full proposal for, for the CEO endorsement process. So ideally the umbrella takes uh, up to 12 months and uh, it has many more countries uh, with uh, over 2 million. So for instance, the last umbrella program that uh, was approved this year in January had 43 countries with a total of uh, uh, 35 million. So that process took about uh, close to a year from uh, the uh, the start of the project, the proposal uh, preparation to uh, the CEO endorsement request. And the other difference is that all the countries under that particular umbrella program is they later on have to prepare their own individual country uh, implementation plans. And also maybe to clarify how we come up with the umbrella is it depends with the number of countries that have submitted their requests. If uh, the countries are maybe just few, we can, which is which uh, their projects are less than 2 million, we do the, the expedited process, the one step medium sized process uh, project. And if the countries are uh, projects are more than, uh, add, uh, uh, are more country, the number of countries are more, and the total cost is more than 2 million, then we go for the uh, umbrella uh, process. So once they implement, uh, they, we receive the approval from the Jeff, then we sign the agreement and we initiate the disbursement of funds for implementation of the project. Thank you. I hope that is clear. Thank you very much, uh, Elka. Uh, colleagues, any further questions? Please don't hesitate to raise your hand. You may also speak in Spanish, of course.
it seems there are no further questions. So I hope everything is uh, was clear. Uh, in uh, in any events, uh, you have contacts uh, of all of us, uh, both from Jeff, from the CBGSP, from the implementing agencies, uh, from the UNFCCC. So please don't hesitate to contact any of us if you have any doubts or if you have any any questions uh, or comments. We would appreciate uh, uh, your your questions and uh, also your feedback. And this takes us to the last part of our meeting. So uh, we have, uh, again, a couple of questions uh, in the Menti. It's, it's the same of uh, uh, the same website and the same code than earlier. So if you could please uh, access that. Mm? Edgar has a question. Yes, Edgar, please go ahead. Let me answer you, though. Um, will this mm -hmm. um, be shared with us after? Yes, all presentations and uh, all uh, uh, and the recording from the webinar will be shared in uh, in the CIBIT platform website. Uh, so my colleague has uh, posted already the, the the link to the website in the chat. So Thank we you will find uh, everything there, uh, hopefully already tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. Good. So then uh, let us move to uh, the, the Manti questions. Uh, we have a final, I think, two or three questions for you. Uh, yes. Uh, bueno, en español, para nuestros uh, compañeros uh, hispanohablantes, esta pregunta se, es, uh, le ha resultado útil este seminario web. Le estoy escribiendo también en el chat. Y de corazón esperamos que les haya servido y que eh, nuestros compañeros han, han ofrecido mucha información, o sea que esperamos que haya sido eh, útil para vosotros y para cualquier otra pregunta estaremos disponibles para, para ayudar, tanto nosotros como, como todos nuestros compañeros de las diferentes agencias. Ya vemos que la mayoría de las, de las respuestas sí. eh, eh, nos eh, dicen que el, que el evento ha sido sí, eh, sí, útil sí. O, o relativamente útil, o sea que damos las gracias por, por vuestro buen feedback. La siguiente pregunta eh, dice, ¿le ha proporcionado este seminario web más claridad sobre cómo acceder a la financiación para su BTR? Estoy escribiendo la pregunta en el chat y también podemos ver en el chat otras preguntas de nuestros compañeros. Muchas gracias. Vemos que, los, que el, 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 el proceso y el webinario ha sido bastante útil, el proceso ha sido clarificado. Y para la última pregunta, ¿hay otras áreas sobre las que le gustaría aprender más en el futuro? Lo dicho, habría, ¿había algún comentario antes sobre, sobre ejemplos de instrumentalización del, del proceso y ejemplos prácticas? He escrito también la pregunta en el chat. Ejemplos prácticos y prácticas. Tenemos también profundizar más sobre los procesos del BTR. Los formatos tabulares dentro del BTR. Los eh, procesos de revisión del CGE o el Consultative Group of Experts. Los... Eh, eh, procesos de soporte y recursos para soporte electrónicos, compilar información sobre el BTR.
diferentes formatos comunes para, para reportar sobre indicadores de los eh, NDCs. profundizar en los MPGs y eh, estas eh, han sido todas las preguntas que teníamos de momento con, para vosotros, así que muchas gracias por vuestra participación. Thank you very much, uh, Alejandro and Suzanne. Uh, so we see that uh, there are uh, still quite, uh, that's the, uh, Alejandro, yeah, there are uh, a few areas that you would like to hear more about. Uh, so the good news is that we have uh, already planned to have some exchange of experience webinars also in uh, for uh, for access to the to the BTR funding uh, to Jeff BTR funding. So we will organize a webinar between uh, countries so that they can exchange uh, their experiences and lessons learned. Uh, so that's that's one thing. The second thing I have seen is that a lot of countries uh, or a lot of uh, colleagues here uh, were asking uh, for uh, uh, more information and more training on the MPGs and on tracking of the NDCs and the use of tabular formats. The good news is that we are already planning to have uh, a workshop in conjunction with the Climate Week in uh, Panama uh, for the LAC region, uh, specifically on this topic. So basically the tracking of NDCs and the use of uh, tabular formats. So please uh, stay tuned for that uh, you uh, uh, our focal points will be receiving uh, invitations soon and we hope that uh, many of you would be able uh, to join join us for uh, for this training uh, otherwise uh, uh, paulo cornejo who is our network coordinator uh, is available also for you to answer your questions and provide the supports uh, that uh, that you might need and as i mentioned before all uh, our colleagues from the implementation agencies from Jeff, uh, from the UNFCCC secretariat, and also the UNFCCC collaborating centers uh, are also here uh, uh, if you need uh, any anything or any support. So thank you very much uh, all for joining us uh, today for your very active participation uh, and uh, we hope uh, to, to have you in many uh, other events, uh, upcoming events. I would like also to take the opportunity to thank uh, uh, our partners, Jeff, uh, UNFCCC, its collaborating centers, uh, the implementing agencies, uh, UNEP, uh, UNDP, and the FAO uh, for all their efforts to prepare for this uh, webinar and for all the presentations. It has been quite uh, a marathon uh, for, uh, uh, for us. We had, this is the third and the last webinar that we have organized in this series. So thank you very much for all your efforts. Uh, these are really appreciated and thank you all for your participation. All the best uh, in your uh, quest uh, to transition to the BTR and uh, we are here for you uh, whenever you need. So thank you very much, uh, colleagues. All thank the best. You. Adios. Thank bye you bye. very much, Fatima. Adios. Bye. Adios. Bye. 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 Muchas gracias a todos por participar. Gracias. 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 Bye. Gracias. Gracias. Goodbye.